Good morning students. Now let us begin with the next topic. Nutrition in animals. Now this concept refers to the body's need for the nutrients, mode of ingesting food and its use in the body. Now the mode of ingesting the food means how the food is taken in by the animals and how these nutrients they are useful for the body. Now the first question is which are the various nutrients in the food? Now we know the various nutrients in the food are carbohydrates, fats, proteins, minerals and vitamins. And second question is for what purpose are the nutrients used? Now these nutrients they are used for life process of the body. Now we know the nutrients necessary for the various activities of the body they are obtained from food. They are supplied to the various parts of the body through blood. The food that we consume does not mix with the blood as it is. It needs to be converted into soluble forms that can easily mix in blood. Now nutrition in, in, in animals involves various steps from ingestion to ejection. Ingestion means taking in the food and ejection means is another word for the excretion of the waste material from the body. Now the steps in nutrition are, the first one is here, the nutrients, this is ingestion, the food is taken into the body. Second step is digestion, conversion of food into simple soluble forms. Third one is absorption, transfer of soluble food to the blood. Fourth one is assimilation, utilization of the absorbed food by cells and tissues for the energy production, growth and repair. And then the fifth one is ejection, removal of the waste products and the undigested food from the body. So I hope these five processes, steps of nutrition, it is clear to you. Ingestion, digestion, absorption, assimilation and then ejection, that is excretion, that is the removal of waste products from the body. Now observe the animals around you and complete the following table. The first column is name of the animal, second one type or the name of the food and third one for the method of the ingestion. Now we know cow, it feeds on the fodder and method of ingestion is through mouth. Now second one is your frog and the name of the food is insects and the method of ingestion is mouth. Now you must have observed that there are different methods of ingestion of food in different animals like swallowing, chewing, sucking, scrapping gnawing etc now is swallowing means what here like the food is directly swallowed by the uh, snakes and all they swallow the food some of them chew the food like we human beings what we do we take in the morsel of the food and which bite it or chew it with the help of the teeth then sucking sucking you must have seen that the small young ones they feed uh, this or uh, suck the um, uh, uh, suck the milk then scrapping this one scrapping here rabbits and then uh, ma mice and all or the mouse what they do they scrap the food then gnawing gnawing here the birds and all you must have seen they gnaw at the fruits and they eat them so now the different types of nutrition in animals we will see is first one is holozoic nutrition now holozoic nutrition means first we will see how the ingestion occur in the unicellular animals like amoeba. Now here with the help of this picture it will be more clear to you. Now this uh, amoeba it has called the pseudopodia. Now what does that pseudopodia do whenever that does it does not have the uh, have the organs like hands and the mouth for taking in the food. It is a unicellular animal. So it can food take in food through any surface of its unicellular body. So here you can see that the food particle comes in contact with the amoeba. So this food part particle here uh, is surrounded uh, is so it surrounds the food particle from all the sides and takes in the food particle inside the body. Now here in this figure you can see finally the food particle is there inside the body. Now after that it digests the food with the help of different enzymes. Now undigested food is left behind 
as the amoeba further moves with the help of pseudopodia. Now, in unicellular animals like amoeba, euglena, paramecium, etc., all the substrate of nutrition occur within the unicellular body. Means there are no different systems or the organs for carrying out that these different steps of nutrition. Now the insects have the mouth parts for the ingestion of the food. For example, insects like the cockroach and the grasshopper, they each nibble like jaw like mouth parts. Butterflies suck the blood, suck the food with the help of a tube like proboscis. Mosquitoes and bed bugs use the needle like mouth part to, pe to pierce and a tube like mouth part to suck blood or other fluids from the body. Now how now these animals here they are shown. So how you will classify these animals according to the food type they eat. Now these animals they can be classified as herbivorous, carnivorous and omnivorous. This all of you know. Now herbivorous. So now let us according to the type of food the animals they are classified into the following types. First one is herbivorous. Herbivorous use the plants directly as their food. Examples are grazing animals, grainivorous, seed eaters and fr frugivorous that is the fruit eaters. Okay. Now next is here the carnivorous animal. The animals that depend on other, uh, other animals for their food are carnivorous. Carnivores are directly dependent on plants for the food. Examples are animals that feed on herbivores, that is the predators. Animals that feed on insects, that is insectivores. Now, omnivorous animals are here. Are the animals that obtain food from both plants and animals are called omnivorous. Examples are monkey, chimpanzee, human, etc. Now, some of the organisms around us perform the function of cleaning and conserving the environment by the very act of eating themselves. They are called as scavengers and decomposers. Now, scavengers, they obtain food from the dead bodies of the animals, for example, vulture, crow and hyenas. Then decomposers, they are the microorganisms that obtain their food by decomposing the dead bodies of organism of other material. Now, saprozoic nutrition. Now, saprozoic nutrition means what some insects, unicellular animals, example, obtain their food, obtain the nutrients by absorbing the liquid organic material from the dead bodies of other animals or from the environment. For example, house flies, ants, spider, etc. So, they are all having the saprozoic nutrition. Now, parasitic nutrition. Parasitic nutrition means have you seen the small animals on the bodies of animals like dogs and buffaloes? Now, which are those small animals here? So, those animals here, they suck the uh, blood from the uh, bodies of the animal on which they are growing. So, from where do these animals obtain food? Now, where do the worms in the intestine obtain their food? Now, some animals depend upon other animals for the food. They can obtain the food only from animals on whom they are dependent. So, they are called as the parasitic nutrition. Now, some animals live in the body surface of other animals and obtain their food by sucking their blood. This is called ectoparasitic nutrition. And such animals are called ectoparasites. For example, loose, then bedbug, tick, etc. Now, animals like tapeworm, roundworms live inside the body of the other animals and they ought to obtain food. So, this is endoparasitic nutrition and these animals are known as endoparasites. Now, I think with this, the chapter is clear to you.